Yeah, it's always an honor to talk to my buddy, Dan Bongino. We don't get to talk as much as I'd like. He's got a fantastic radio show and a podcast and all the rest of it. And he's written a great book, The Gift of Failure. And I'll rethink the title of it if this book fails, Dan Bongino. Dan, what what caused you to write a book like this? Well, you know, Mark, listen, no, nobody... Nobody knows the book business better than you. I mean, you're like you're an iconic guy. I mean, Liberty and Tyranny probably was like the manifesto for the Tea Party movement. You know, I got an advanced copy of your new book, Democrats Do Hate America, by the way. Um, it's it's up there with Liberty and Tyranny. But, you know, with the book business, it is. It's amazing. And I'm, I'm, I'm grateful you're coming on my show next week to talk about it. My audience is already looking forward to it. But uh, I was, I was never, I like, I only like to write books when I have some kind of purpose. So it's been a while. It's been about three, four years and I wasn't really inspired. And, and when Rumble, which was the free speech competitor to YouTube, uh, when Rumble went public and we had finally succeeded in taking this parallel economy idea away from these nutbag, lunatic, psychopath liberals, and we finally took it to the public stock markets for a billion dollar valuation. It's a funny story. I'm walking out of the NASDAQ and it's raining and I'm talking to my wife and I'm getting all these tweets from crazy lunatic liberals. I may have been off their meds or something. And they're like, look at this loser, Bongino at Rumble. He ran for Congress and law. What a loser. And everything was about me being such a loser. And I looked at Paula, Mark, and I said, man, if this is losing, bring on the losing. Like, this is pretty good. <laughs> this losing feels pretty good. So... She's like, I think you should write a book about all the things you lost that wow. because you lost that a lot. You know, you dusted off and got up and did your thing. So that that's basically how the book started. It's a very, very inspiring book. You know, you're, you start your career, you're a hardworking guy um, in law enforcement and so forth. And I jump to the fact that you run for a number of offices in an extremely difficult environment Maryland, which is very difficult for Republicans, even run for the Senate. Um, remember, Julie and I came to one of the fundraisers at your house there, and uh, you had a lot of support. You did better than almost any Republican has ever done in that state. And uh, you give it another shot down in Florida, and you dust yourself up, and now you're really an international personality with real substance of following you're blown away uh, on the podcast and so forth. You got a huge hit on the radio show. This book, Gift of Failure, it almost reminds me of this guy Hurts, the quarterback of the of the Eagles, if you don't mind my analogy here. You know, there he was in the Alabama yeah. game, a playoff game. There's 25 million people watching, and he's yanked at halftime. And he dusts himself off, and now look at him. He's, he's, he is a tremendous yeah. quarterback. You must get down a little bit like all the rest of us. How do you pick yourself back up? You explain everything that you've done in the book. Go ahead. Yeah, it's hard, Mark. I mean, listen, my, in the Senate race, I got I, I just got annihilated. I mean, it was humiliating. I got destroyed. Uh, it was a three-person race. It was really an, a, you know, an embarrassing performance. I mean, I did my best. I knocked on all these doors, and it didn't happen, so... You know, I, I figured, all right, well, I'm not going out like that. Then I run for Congress in a hugely Democrat district, a D-plus. Leave district, it right there. District. Leave it right there. Yeah. That, I, I, this is very, very important. And so he gets blown out in the Senate. You know, he could have been glum for the rest of his life, but he wasn't. And this is where I want to pick up, Dan. The book is The Gift of Failure. You get it at Amazon.com. All my social platforms, we have them. I encourage you to get it. So, Dan Bongino, we were talking about this Senate race. You felt humiliated. You were, you were kind of beat up. You left the state, actually, because I know you, you folks wanted to be in Florida, uh, for among other reasons, yeah. uh, the environment of, of Florida. And you decided to run again, by the way. Yeah. What was that all yeah, about? So we, get to cross, we get annihilated in the Senate race. brutal. I mean, and the thing about politics is, you know, it's like our business. You know, Mark, it, when you fail in this business and in politics, you fail publicly. It's, it's, it's not like, you know, right. even in the Secret Service when I was there, if you'd screwed up 
and no one said anything about it. You fixed it. Nobody knew anything. The old, you know, uh, the tree fall in the woods mm-hmm. thing. But not in our business. If you suck, everybody knows it. Yeah. And it's a lot, you know, it's a lot of pressure. So I run for Congress again. We almost win in a big, huge Democrat district uh, that no one's come within double digits, uh, not even within, I think, 15 points of winning. We lose by one point. We actually win on election day. And so I'm like, gosh, we got beat up again. It's over. Moved to Florida. Finally, the third time I run, I think this is it. It turns out to be a bad race. I get smoked. I'm like, this really sucks. And I thought when it occurred to me that, you know, Mark, and one of the lessons in the book uh, is sometimes you ask God for an answer and he answers no. And you're just not willing to accept it. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I, I'm a believer. I, you know, I, I've always been. Uh, I, I pray to Jesus every night and ask him for, you know, to be a better man tomorrow than I was today. And, mm-hmm. and you know, I kept asking him, is this, is this the right call? And he kept giving me every sign that it wasn't. <laughs> me and politics weren't going to work out. And, and I just kept ignoring it. So, you know, I write in the book, sometimes you ask for answers. The answer is no. You just got to mm-hmm. listen. That's the thing. And it was not for me. I don't have the temperament for that. I, you know, unlike you, Mark, unlike you, I, <laughs> I, mean, I don't have a bad temper. Unlike Mark Levin, you, I don't have a bad temper at all. I mean, I have a horrible temper. Mark, you're a very controlled guy. <laughs> you know, so I don't have the patience for that bull stuff. I just don't. Right. So that's how I got into talk radio with you. I mean, with you and Sean, that's in there too. Like I wouldn't have been doing this without you and Sean. I mean, that whole story, how it started is, is in the book. I mean, I have this show right now, 12 to three, we, we lost your great friend, Rush Limbaugh, who I had never met and I could never ever replace in a quadrillion years. But, um, you know, I, I'm in the spot. I enjoy it, but I'm only there because of you and Sean and you guys are very humble about it. All right. Listen to me. You both You're know way it. too gracious. Number one, number two, yeah. When I got into this business, I said to Rush, how the hell am I going to follow you and Hannity? And you know what he said to me, Dan Bongino? Hopefully I said it to you. But nobody's heard from you. Nobody's heard from mm-hmm. Dan. Those are words of I've wisdom. I've never heard that. They it's are incredible. Words of wisdom, I'm glad you just said that. Because you make now, me I, feel better. Because Mark, I feel you, guilty You're not replacing it. anybody. You're Dan Bongino. I know, but I feel terrible about it. Because, I, you know... I mean, obviously, having gone through um, cancer myself with, you know, not the same result, I just, you know, I, I, when you grow up a fan of people, it's different. Like, I listen to what everybody listened to, Rush, mm-hmm. Sean, and Mark. I mean, that's, that's been the last 20 years of radio. If you didn't listen to Rush, Sean, and Mark, you, you weren't a conservative or you were living on Jupiter or something. Like, that just didn't, I don't mean Jupiter, Florida. I mean, the <laughs> Like that didn't, you guys were it. I mean, that was what you did. You, you listened for nine hours. Sometimes you tuned in and out, but that was it. And then when he left, you know, we still have you two guys, but it just left this big hole. And I mean, I get it. I, it's nothing I or anyone else could have done. It was God's time and that's it. But, you know, when you grow up a fan of someone, it's just, I don't know, I, man. I just it's just think, different. Dan. Like I'm on the radio thinking to myself, I don't want to listen to me. I'd rather listen to him right now. Like, I don't, but listen, you know. I, 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 obviously, I can't speak for him, but I was very close to him. I think he'd be very, very proud by what you do each and every day on the air. Carry the flag, push for liberty. In the back of your book, the book is The Gift of Failure, folks. It's really a very easy to read book, and it is filled with gems here. I mean, I really had a dig through in order to decide what I wanted to talk about. I get to the afterword here and you posted something uh, and then you go back to it at the end of the book and you have these uh, just a couple of paragraphs really of really brilliant, brilliant advice and you say, look, I learned this the hard way but you have advice here that I still don't follow that I, that I need to follow. For instance, let's go through a couple of these. Number one, grit and determination are far more determinative of success than intelligence, looks, or athleticism. He said, I've met a lot of very smart people who stumbled and simply failed to get up. The world is littered with gifted people who failed to get up after the fall. They don't see failure as a gift to learn from, but an insurmountable obstacle. Look around you. You'll see those people everywhere, and you'll never unsee it. And then look at the gritty people. Chances are... 
They've had incredible failures before their most profound achievements. That is that is brilliant. And uh, when did you start following that advice? Or, or, or not advice, but when did you start following your own advice on that? Well, I was sick when I wrote that. I was really sick. I had had um, some stuff going on, and I was in really bad shape. And I was sitting in my house, and I thought, gosh, if I can only talk to my younger self right now. Because, you know, when you're sick, you know, you're bored because you can't go contaminate other people. So I'm sitting there, and I thought to myself, what would I tell my younger self? And I thought that. I mean, Mark, you and I have had the honor, uh, due to our great audiences, um, uh, some of which overlap, I'm sure a lot of it. Uh, These people have been there for us, and they've enabled guys like you and me to be around very successful people. They did this for us. Mm -hmm. And, And I learned this. I'm like, I'm talking to people who are annoyed. And I'm not just talking about political people and business people. I'm talking about athletes and other folks, entertainers. And you notice they almost have nothing in common. They're not all good looking. They're not all smart. They're not all Mm -hmm. athletic. They just all have this one trait. They'll tell you 25 stories about getting told no before they got told that I call the big yes. You know, Mm -hmm. some radio station said, hey, Mark, you're going national, buddy. Like they they, they think this happens overnight and it doesn't. I mean, you can tell stories because I've heard your stories. Me and you are friends. This didn't happen overnight. Like it was this station and then there was a big success here and then boom, all of a sudden like this opportunity. I mean, oh my gosh, Mark Levin, overnight success. I always say, yeah, I'm an overnight success. It took 12 years. I mean, <laughs> 12 years of overnight. I mean, none of this stuff happened. I mean, Rush passed way too quickly and someone called me and said, hey man, it's your turn. Mm-hmm. That didn't happen overnight. I had to build this enormous podcast first. Mm-hmm. I had a, a guest host for you, for Sean. I, I, I had to not embarrass you guys. And I thought, it's all grit. Like, it's grit. I'm not the smartest guy. Believe me, I ain't, I, I'm at the media. I'm, 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 I'm not dumb, but I'm not going to sit here and tell your audience, hey, I got a 1600 on my SAT. I didn't. I just read a lot of stuff. You know, I never mm-hmm. lost a debate on Fox. I can tell you that right now. And it's not because I'm smarter than these guys. It's because you're self-taught. It's because I just read everything. Yes. <laughs> yes. I'm self-taught. I'm All right. A, I want to hit another one hearing. that strikes very close to home that I can't seem to get a hold of and I need to. Number four, sleep is the game changer. Show me someone sleeping four it. hours a night. I and I'll knew show you were going here half with this. A, a person. Dan, I sleep four hours a night. I can't break it. I know. And, and you're 100% Go right. Go ahead. You know, but you're 100% yeah. right. Listen, Mark, I, 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 I'm, I'm, an, I'm, I'm 48. I've been through 19 orthopedic surgeries, chemotherapy, radiation, childhood asthma. Okay. My family's got a history of diabetes. My, I have the worst gene code you've ever seen. And I'm telling you, at 48, I'd argue being through all of that, outside of some like arthritic pain, I've never felt better. I've never been in better shape, and it's the craziest thing. Sleep was the key to the whole thing. My entire life, I've taken supplements, vitamin C, collagen, berberine, you name a supplement, I take it. I'm on all this stuff. I feel terrible. I'd be on the radio sometimes on the show ready to pass out. And I'm thinking to myself, it's got to be something wrong. I get this crazy aura ring thing. I start monitoring my sleep. I was sleeping like a dog, like a dog. I mean, like, and I figured, I, oh, you start figuring out tricks. Once you master sleep, change your whole life. Your entire mm-hmm. life will be different. You will never be the same person again. And if you think I'm overselling that, I, I did not put it in a book for nothing. Go get yourself one of those sleep honors. Figure out your sleep. You'll be a changed person. I, I mean it. I mean, I, it was so important. I put it at the end of the book. And I know it is, and it creates problems for the heart. And, uh, I will tell you something I haven't told anybody, and I'll tell the whole world. I had the Inspire uh, product put in my chest uh, with a wire up to the back of the throat uh, because of sleep apnea, because I wasn't going to wear those damn masks. I don't know. Julie might be mad at me for talking about it, but I'm talking about it. So um, I do um, all the time. Paula gets mad at me for everything. Yeah. I, 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 I share way <laughs> too much with you. But, Mark, that's why. But you have to understand, like, you know, that's why you, you're the most powerful talk radio host in the country. But, you know, that people want to feel like they know you. They don't want to feel cheated. So when I'm on the show, I learned how to be a radio host. 
from this cat named Mark Levin. I mean, I listened to you for years. So I tell everyone, like, everything I learned on the radio, I learned from you. Everything. Everything. Whether you're a sweetheart. It's the allegiance to the Constitution. Nah, man, it's true. It's true. And and you're, you know, I don't mean it to be a love fest, because yeah, you're, but it's just true. Why not? Wait, I have like one in five married, years, because I'm not in love with anybody else. Tom will tell you the truth, except my own family and wife. <laughs> All right, let me ask you this one. This is, I think, a very, very important one, which we're basically doing here. Choose your friends wisely. That is oh so crazy. You don't have to have a lot of them, you say. But have got, and by the way, I met two of your friends at a restaurant when I was in uh, Florida oh, a month or two. Funny nice story. people. Nice people. They loved you. Mark, so yes, uh, uh, choose your friends wisely at the end of the book. You do not need a lot of friends, folks. I don't have a lot of friends because Mark, I don't know I don't want to overshare, but I think like you, I just don't, I don't trust a lot of, I'm sorry, I've been burned a lot. So I just don't let a lot of people in my network, but the people I let in who I, who I know I can trust, like that guy, the orthodontist you met, who said you could not have been nicer. I, he's like, Dan, Mark Levin is the (laughs) nicest guy. He ran into, I know the restaurant too, so I'm going back there in a couple of weeks. Great restaurant. And uh, that guy's the greatest guy. I met him. He was a parent of one of my uh, my daughter's schoolmates, and we go on vacations together. And Mark, I'll tell you, there's and, and I mentioned in the book at the end with choosing your friend that you you know sometimes you can't rely on on family. So sometimes they'll let you down too. But if you can have a friend to vent and unload all this stuff on, mm-hmm. and you know, and and he just gets it, and it's not a, a a labor to talk to them. You're not like. You don't have to think of something every two minutes. You can actually just sit there quiet once in a while. That is worth uh, uh, billions of dollars in income to your life, what it would give you an equivalent value. Uh, it's nothing like it. So you don't need a lot of friends. You just need I, some I, darn Honestly, good Dan, I wish we had an hour because I love hearing you. I love talking to you. You have tremendous insight, tremendous insight, life experiences, but you got a very – Good noggin on top of your shoulders there. Very, very smart <laughs> dude. You. you know, you really are. And self-taught in many ways. I know I am. Most things I learned, I, trust me, I didn't learn in college and law school. I had to forget most of that. But you, it's, it's, really, it's, <laughs> it, 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 it's really genuine. And, folks, I really want you to grab this book. It's going to make a difference. The Gift of Failure, and I'll rethink the title if this book fails by Dan Bongino. The Gift of Failure by Dan Bongino. And the other thing you are is you're a tremendous patriot. And Dan, I want to thank you for your friendship. I want to thank you for your decency and your kindness. And I want to thank you for this book. Folks, get the book and grab it now, The Gift of Failure by Dan Bongino. This is a very different book. And God bless you, my brother. Hey, Mark, you're a good man. And, uh, you know, I know you've got a lot going on. And for me to come on your show and for you to let me do this, I'm an honor. get it. It's an honor. You're a good man. I wouldn't have wrote the book without you, man. Oh, well, I wouldn't have been here without you. And your audience needs to know that. Thank we're going to have to meet up in Florida, all of us. Take care of yourself, brother. He's right. great. He is exactly as he sounds. There's no affectation, nothing. He's just a great guy.